Hi guys, Micro here. This is my 10 HP Hero Episode 2, which is my Episode 9 of my Skiller series. And this one's called Eurekium. I changed my Skiller's name from Micro Strength to Eurekium, which is my name backwards. I did this because it's not just a Strength Pure anymore, it's all round 10 HP Pure. And I thought the name looked really cool and a friend suggested it to me. And it was free, so I thought why not take it. In this episode, I get loads and loads of combat stats through questing and other means, and the stats are rocketing up. My combat is getting to a nice level. So let's get into the games. So starting off the video with a farm run, I got 82 farming, keeping up the gains there. Still doing use and papayas to save some money. It was time to get some combats up. I still had one thing to do in the combat academy, so I thought I'd get that done. All I had to do was kill some stuff, and obviously it doesn't give you experience, so that was fine killing the things. So after completing it, I got two XP books because I didn't get the highest rank. I thought the 2 XP books would be enough to give me 4 magic, but the 2 XP books actually only got me to level 3 magic. This means that I had to do the whole process over again and get the legend rank. So after I got the legend rank, I got my last book which got me to 4 magic. And level 4 magic unlocked enchant opal bolts, so then I could just enchant some opal bolts to get enough to enchant sapphire. I enchanted some opal bolts, I got to level 7 magic, and that unlocked my sapphire jewellery. With Sapphire Enchant unlocked, I did some Ring of Recoils. With a recent update, you can just AFK enchanting now. So you just make a full inventory of 27 and just watch your magic level rock it up. Within no time, I was level 27 magic. 27 magic then unlocks enchant emeralds. So then I could do some Ring of Duelings. Doing Ring of Duelings was insanely fast XP. It was about 80 to 90k XP an hour with the Avatar. And as a Pantheon Aura, probably could reach 100k per hour. It took me a mere 20 minutes to get from level 27 to level 43. Level 43 got my combat up to level 40 now. And it has unlocked Super Heat item. So I'm going to be superheating for the rest of my magic levels all the way to 99. While superheating, your best friend is the coal bag. So I had to spend 4,000 Dungeoneering points to get the coal bag so I could superheat efficiently. The coal bag can hold 81 coal and it's great. In order to use the coal bag, when you have your inventory set up in the bank interface, just right click and fill the coal bag and then you can easily just use your preset to close the bank and then start superheating. If you have the ore you're superheating as the last ore in your inventory, just keep spamming that ore until it's all done. I'm doing adamant ore until I'm 85 smithing and then I'll be able to do runite ore and make lots and lots of money. Adamant ore is pretty much break even, you may make a little tiny bit of money, but it's literally not even worth doing it for money, only for magic XP. As a break from superheating, I did a sinkhole. I used my Protecting Titan card on a large lamp, which means I was guaranteed that large lamp by the end pretty much. And that large lamp from the sinkhole got me to level 55 Dungeoneering. Going straight back in, I did another sinkhole and I got a consistent yak card. So I got my medium lamp and the medium lamp got me to 56 Dungeoneering. I'm just going to do sinkholes for most of my Dungeoneering on this account. While superheating, continuing doing the method that I said about earlier, I got to level 70 magic. It didn't really take too long to get to 70 magic, plus when you're doing it in a portables world, the pulse scores are popping all the time. So it's really useful to do it where there is pulse scores for the 10% extra experience, even though you're not using the portable. After the 70 magic, I got 83 smithing, so only two smithing levels until I can start making some really good money with Runite Ore. Keeping up with my daily sinkholes, I got to level 58 from those two of this day. Make sure in your farm runs that you sell the fruit. Papayas give me so much money back, it's unreal. They give a good proportion of the seed back when you sell them. So as you can see, I sold those papayas for over a mil. And the seeds probably only cost me around 2.5 mil. So I made half of my money back just in the fruit I harvest. I've been maintaining my Jack of Trades. I've been putting it into Slayer. But I'm going to start putting it into Defense soon. As Defense is really important. Because I want to get lots and lots of Defense levels. To get my combat as close to 100. Before I start doing Pest Control. As then when I get to 100. I could do the highest boat. Which will give me the most tokens. And XP per hour. But I got 54 Slayer this time. Back to smithing, I wanted to do a bit of AFKing while making a video, so I done some Addy Claws and it got me to 85 smithing. 
and I hit 60 Dungeoneering milestone just from sinkholes pretty much on this account. So it's really important that you do your daily D&Ds. Sinkholes gave me well enough points to then buy a scroll of cleansing. The scroll of cleansing is so good for Herblor and it's going to save me so much money. Plus I'm going to get the factory outfit which is just going to be absolutely insane amount of money made with the scroll of cleansing and factory outfit while getting cleaning herb XP making unfinished potions. It was time to superheat runite ore. What you want to do is have 11 runite ore, the rest coal and fill up your coal bag. And obviously have your nature runes in your inventory. You can make 11 runite ore per inventory and just making the inventories over and over again filling up your coal bag using your preset to then close the bank and load up your inventory. You can do around 2000 to 2500 bars an hour when superheating runite ore. This leads to about 3 to 3.5 mil GP an hour depending on the profit margin of rune bars at that point. It's also 150,000 smithing and 150,000 magic XP an hour which means you're getting 300k XP an hour in total while superheating. So it's just great, not to mention the pulse cores and the desert pantheon aura speed up the smithing gains even more. So it's really really easy to get smithing and magic levels doing this, it's just very click intensive. But as you can see I got to 75 magic which then has taken my combat level up again. And I'm now 61 combat, rocketing up those combat levels, only 39 more for the highest pest control ladder. I also got 86 smithing in the process so I'll be able to get 99 smithing and magic at very similar times. I didn't like seeing my prayer level at 1, so I bought some air at bones and thought that I would quickly get up my prayer to like level 60 or something, using some of the money I made from superheating room bars so far. Make sure you drink a perfect juju prayer potion for the 5% prayer XP. As you can see in this inventory, this one inventory alone has given me so many prayer levels with air at bones, they're giving me over 500 XP per bone. Just one inventory got me to level 30 prayer which is absolutely insane. I'm using the wilderness altar over the gilded altar as I think the wilderness altar is much much faster XP an hour and nobody really PKs at the wilderness altar anyway so you don't really have much chance of being PKed and losing your stuff. And I used one last bone to get me to 60 prayer this also got me to 69 combat, so that's always good as well. 31 more combats for pest control. I was actually kind of enjoying superheating. I'm not 100% sure why. I think it's because I'm making good money and some decent magic gains at the same time. But I carried on doing some more superheating and got 80 magic. Once I was 80 magic, I kind of just wanted to do some quests to get my other combats up as I don't really like seeing the combats at 1 anymore. While having 80 magic, only having one attack is kind of depressing. The first quest I did was Merlin's Crystal. Recoiling monsters is always fun, so I'm going to have to do a lot of that with these quests. After Merlin's Crystal, I did the Waterfall quest. Gotta love how the Waterfall quest gives you so much attack and strength XP. I got 30 attack right off the bat. Always a nice thing to go from 1 to 30 in one quest. After that, I wanted to do Vampire Slayer for some more attack XP. I really like the cutscenes in RuneScape now. They put so much effort and detail into things like cutscenes, it's great. So in order to have the kill be yours, as I can't Sara Brew and not hit them anymore because I've got attack levels, I need to use a weakened spell in order to make the target mine. So I just use one of the weakened spells. I use the one that requires chaos runes because why not? And then just allow Dracula to kill himself. Once he was low enough, I could just press the stake, jam it into his heart, Watch him turn into a rock, which was a pretty cool little animation again, and his head fell off. I actually haven't seen half of these new quests as i done them when they were really, really old. So it's really cool seeing them again. After the quest was traded in, I got to level 33 attack. So another 3 attack levels just from that really short and easy quest. After using the keys from the quest, I managed to get a huge HP lamp that I put into defense, which got me to 5 defense and 72 combat. Next up I had a quest that was so close to be completed but I never got round to actually completed it because I needed a blood amulet of fury. Now I've got a blood amulet of fury I just recoiled and blood amulet of furied the feud quest. I just had to kill two mobs the first mob takes ages to kill because he barely hits you so you're not recoiling enough that's why you need the blood amulet of fury. The second guy is pretty easy he dies really really quick. After I killed those two guys, I traded in the quest, and the quest got me to 57 thieving. Always nice to get some free thieving gains, and access to Blackjack the Menophyte Fugs if I really want to. Using some more keys in defense, I managed to go all the way from level 5 
to level 11 defense which also got up my combat a little bit more the next quest i wanted to do was the fight arena quest the fight arena is probably the hardest quest i've done so far you have to fight a lot of different enemies over and over again and the hellhound at the end is quite hard hitting so recoiling and blood fury in that it's quite a challenge because you have to chug quite a lot of food. It's not really hard, it's just quite draining on your resources. Turns out I messed up and majorly wasted like 20 minutes of my life killing this guy. Once you've killed the three mobs, this guy spawns and starts attacking you with the other two running away. Apparently you could just run through the door, but I missed that part of the quest guide. So I did not run through the door. I fought this guy. The first phase was nice and easy. It hurt a little bit, but he died really fast. Then he turns massive and hits so hard. I got to the point where I had to go back and forth. So my blood fury would proc on him, run back, proc my blood fury, run back. And I would wait like, you know, 30 seconds or so each time. And it took so long. But after that was done, he was dead and I completed the quest. I could have just ran away, but I guess it's cooler killing him anyway. And it was quite a cool achievement being able to do it as a 10 HP pure. But this quest then got me to 38 attack. So another 5 levels in attack is always nice and I'm not going to complain. Even though I messed up and wasted some time. Always doing my farming runs every day got me to 83 farming. I completed Tree Gnome Village. Tree Gnome Village gave good attack XP and got me to 41 attack. I'd done a bit more superheating while taking a break from questing. Got to 89 smithing. This Meteor promo was absolutely overpowered. Using my daily key and some leftover keys that I had from quests. I put it all into defense and got my defense all the way up. Which also increased my combat level nicely. I think whenever I'm AFKing on this account from now on I'm going to do some fishing. Because I want to get my fishing level high and it also gives me some good invention XP. I got level 82 fish in here. Doing the circus is a really good way to get your range up early. I did my performance. I missed loads and loads of times because I was so low. But I managed to hit a fair amount. And I got to level 10 range just from this week's circus. Next week I should be able to get even more range XP. I had some more earned keys and free daily keys as I've got the Premier Club. And out of those 5 keys I managed to get 3 more meteors. The meteors got my defense up even more and I got to 23 defense. Back to superheating got me 83 magic which also brought my combat level up to 79 which means I only need 21 more levels in order to do the high ladder of pest control. In the same time I got to 90 smithing so it's nearly halfway to 99 which is absolutely awesome. The last quest I wanted to do for this video was the grand tree. The demon was pretty strong. But he wasn't too bad and I didn't eat that much food to be honest. The blood fury is just so amazing against things like this. Once he was dead, that was the hardest part of the quest done. I then just had to go to the king with the rock. And it gave me some more attack XP which got me to 44 attack. And then obviously I got some keys for completing the quest. Which gave me some more meteors. I used those in defense. And I managed to end on 29 defense. Next video I'm going to do things like Dragon Slayer and things like that. So I can get even more XP in all of the different skills. And keep getting my combat up as much as possible. I don't think I'll be able to get 100 combat before the first spotlight of pest control. But hopefully by the second spotlight of pest control coming around. I'll be 100 combat and the first pest control should be able to give me a couple of combat levels. Along with my jacker trades in defense. Thanks for watching, hope you enjoyed this video. Give it a like if you enjoyed and subscribe if you're new. Feel free to join my friends chat micro if you fancy a chat in game or if you wanted to talk about anything in general, whether it's the 10 HP pure, any of my guides, anything like that. Feel free to ask whatever you want in the friends chat. Goblin Slayers with a Z is my clan. It's open to everyone and anyone. We have about 175 members now. It's growing by the day. More and more people joining in. We'll have our second avatar by Double XP Weekend. So we can have two avatars going for Double XP Weekend. And we're closing in on Tier 5 Citadel so we can unlock the loom. So thank you everyone who's joined the clan and is helping out there. The Discord link will be in the description. Discord is a voice communication service that is free. And it's just like Skype but a group chat. It's like a better version of TeamSpeak if you've ever used that. So if you fancy chatting via voice communications to me and everyone else on there, whenever I'm not doing a voiceover and I'm not busy with work or anything like that, I'll be on Discord. So it's always really nice to see friendly new faces there along with the regulars. Always a really fun, chilled atmosphere. And until next time, see ya.